This week's conversation is sponsored by Trinity Market at Trinity University. So we're here at Nowcast SA Studios on the sixth floor of Central Library, and we're having a conversation about slap suits, strategic lawsuits against public participation. With me today is Alicia Calzada, a uh, former photojournalist who is now a First Amendment attorney um, with Haynes and Boones in the San Antonio office, right? And also State Representative Diego Bernal, um, who represents District 123, and he's also an attorney and a former San Antonio City Councilman. Um, Alicia, you were instrumental in getting Texas to pass a law uh, against slap suits. Um, tell me, Tell me what's behind that and how the bill came about. Sure. Um, well, Texas and many other states have been plagued with lawsuits that were not based on merit but had been filed as a way of punishing people for exercising their First Amendment right. And uh, for about 10 years, my boss, Laura Prather, had been trying to get a, a law passed, an anti slap law passed here in Texas based on the one that's in California. And uh, the California's had an anti-slap law for about 10 years. Um, the lawmakers in Texas in 2011 saw some great testimony and just um, heard some very compelling stories about how people were just um, driven to uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in expense uh, in retaliatory lawsuits for things like speaking out against their homeowners association or um, you know, media companies who report on Medicaid fraud and are getting sued, that kind of thing. And so um, the, the legislature unanimously passed in both houses um, the Texas Citizens Participation Act. And the TCPA, or the Texas Citizen Participation Act, is, is an anti-slap law, it's a type of anti-slap law. And what it does is it allows somebody who's been sued for activities or communications based on their First Amendment rights uh, to ask for an early dismissal, at which point the, um, the plaintiff has to demonstrate that there's some kind of a case there. Um, they have to present elements, evidence of elements of what's called a prima facie case. So basically what that means is they have to show the court that this is, there is something here. This isn't just me trying to charge you with a, a big penalty of hassle for the and as a way of bullying you to shut up. And that's, and that's really how it came about. I mean, th that, that these suits were being filed as a means of bullying people oh, who, yeah. who, who were speaking out, whether it was uh, news organizations or whether it was, you said, someone speaking out about their, their homeowners association mm -hmm. sure. um, and, and saying, just being, exercising their First Amendment rights, right? Yeah, there was a woman that testified at the Senate hearings in, in 2011 who had... Um, been sued by her homeowners association for putting signs in her yard, and um, I think they sued her even for RICO. I mean, just all kinds of crazy stuff. And she's RICO spent, being the racketeering under yeah, racketeering law. Yeah, and so um, you know, she was a great example of somebody who'd just been devastated by the ability of people to just go into the courthouse and file a lawsuit. Because because most of us feel like well. It's, Anybody can file a lawsuit, and then it's and then then it's up to me, and all the expenses on me to try to defend myself against this lawsuit, even if the lawsuit is simply something that is designed to, to bully me or shut me up. Yes, exactly. And so and so what what the anti anti slap law, Texas Citizens Participation Act does is turns that around and says to the person who filed the lawsuit, prove that you have a real case. Yeah. Right. One of the real important elements of, of the Texas Citizen Participation Act is if it gets dismissed, then the plaintiff who forced you to go and hire a lawyer and defend yourself can be assessed with um, attorney's fees against, um, against the defendant. And so um, one of the things this has done is it's caused people really to think twice um, when they're filing a lawsuit that is connected to you know, your First Amendment rights. It's terrific. So, Representative Bernal, you and State Senator Menendez just issued some educational material right. uh, to folks about this. Right. We made a, a bilingual flyer that's designed to let community members know what their rights are and that participating, let's say, in, in a designated city process, for example, is a protected act, that there's nothing illegal about it. And so, if they're threatened with a lawsuit or actually sued, that they, are, they have protections and should know that going forward. It also is a way for them to know that in the event someone threatens them with a the lawsuit, they can say, hey, hey, I know what you're doing, and just know that I know my rights, and I think you might be up to no good, and sometimes that alone gets people to back off. 
to letting them know that you do know your rights, right? That's right. Right. That's right. And, and this is important because... Well, it's important. Well, first of all, it's important for people to always know their rights, especially with something as as important and sort of the cornerstone of who we are as, right. as a country is the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in in the office, she's sort of you're sort of a folk hero because it's it's so important to us. Um, but this really came about because there was a, a actual situation where there was a neighborhood association that was opposing an element of a developer's project, and they lost the first round of it and were about to appeal. Uh, to the Board of Adjustments, the second round, under under a formal city process, a formal a formal right. city process, and the developer had his attorney send them a letter saying, "If you don't withdraw your appeal, um, I, I'm going to sue you." And he sent it to the association and individual members, and they they backed off. And what was striking to me about that was this was a neighborhood that is full of professionals, attorneys, even architects, uh, people in the medical field. And I thought, all right, so if this is happening here, and they were scared enough or, or shaken enough to back off, you go to one neighborhood to the west, the east, the south, and those places are even more vulnerable. And so we wanted to make sure that all these people knew that engaging in a process as straightforward as that was a protected act, that that was the, that threat was illegal. A lawsuit would certainly be illegal. And at the, at the minimum, because of the state law, the state senator and I decided, we need to make sure they know what their rights are, that engaging in those processes are is a protected act, that it's legal, and they should feel secure in doing it. Um, and so we just created this, this quick flyer, and uh, we made it in English and Spanish, and we've been passing it out ever since. Um, but it's also what it's done is it's brought us together to think about what else we can do in the coming legislative session that we could, where we could make this even stronger. So um, a good relationship has come from that also. It's been really mm -hmm. nice for us. Well, that's terrific. I mean, because we, one of the things that I'd heard was that Texas has one of the strongest anti-slap suits in the country, So, um, which is which is terrific. Um, but you can, but more can be done, you think? Right. I mean, I think that, that the, the law itself is very, very strong, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's as user-friendly um, or that the process itself is user friendly. The courts are not always user friendly, especially to vulnerable folks or folks who don't have a lot of resources who can't afford to go and get an attorney. So we've been talking about ways to make that process even easier uh, and, and honestly cheaper for them. And she's been amazing. I'll let you talk about that. But. Yeah, well, and to be clear, um, we're not talking about changing the, legis the legislation right. itself or right. the statute itself. Uh, what we've been talking about is ways to um, help people use it to their benefit That's right. more. Um, and ways that um, the legislature or the court system can assist them with that because it is a really powerful law and um, it was designed to help the everyday person who probably can't come to me and, and hire me to help them necessarily, although we certainly consult with people all the time and pass out um, information to folks um, when asked. And we work with other lawyers around the state if, if um, you know, they have questions about the statute and that kind of thing. Um, so the idea is really to see how we can make sure that this statute is accessible to mm -hmm. everyone who could potentially use it. Right. Um, and, and so that, I'm, I'm pretty excited about what we've been working on. That's, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely terrific because, yes, I mean, it, and it goes back to the, the well-educated members of that neighborhood association didn't know and didn't know what was available to them and also may have felt like there were, the barriers were, were too high. Yeah. You know, so knowing that the barriers may not be as high, or or making those barriers, making people better aware of how yeah. they can get through those barriers, right. is really really important. I mean, right now there's still, to some degree, um, you know, you're you're not always going to be able, around the state. You're not always going to be able to find a resource as rich as this one. Yeah. And someone who's willing to do it pro bono and who knows it that well. So, the, to the degree that someone still has to go and hire an attorney just right. to get in the courtroom door and make their case to the judge. We want to find a way to sort of democratize that, so it, the, the cost of entry is lower. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to try to do that, but we're, we're being experimental and um, thoughtful me. about it, <laughs> right? Me. But if you lift it up to me by myself, I'd totally mess it up. You bring her in, and all of a sudden things get better. <laughs> well, let's, let's go back to um, um, to who you your firm just did. It's been five years now, right? It's been five years yeah. since this law passed, and your firm just did a recap of, of what's happened in those five years. Yeah. Talk to me about some of the kinds of people this has helped. Yeah, it's been a huge range, as expected. You know, when we when we went to the legislature five years ago and said um, 
we want you to pass this law, we think it's important. Um, we brought to them examples, or people even showed up on their own when they heard about it, um, you know, examples from the whole spectrum, as I said, individuals who've been targeted by, um, for speaking out about their homes and stuff like that, um, to large media corporations. And sure enough, that has played out in the last five years. So a huge range of people, um, homeowners, um, bloggers, a lot of folks who say comment on a business on Yelp, um, you know, or Yahoo comments or Google reviews or something like that. A business owner, say, doesn't like what they say, um, and they might threaten to sue them or actually do it. Um, so that's a perfect classic example of um, a slap suit. And, and, a, and, a, and a person who is just a, an, an ordinary person going mm -hmm. about their business of writing a Yelp review yeah. and suddenly faced with a, with yeah. a lawsuit. And to be clear, you don't have a right to defame somebody and, right. and write things, write Yelp reviews that are blatantly untrue and, and defamatory. But if you're writing a truthful review and you, you're representing your opinion and saying, you know, well, they did things this way and I didn't really like it or whatever, um, you know, that, that's protected. And so we have certainly seen a lot of people in that situation um, who've taken advantage of the statute. And certainly we've had media companies who've reported on things people don't like hearing the truth about themselves, <laughs> frankly. Um, you know, and so there have been a lot of situations where um, companies didn't really like um, when certain information came out about them. And um, so they've tried to sue and we've been able to use the anti-slap law to prevent that. Um, the Better Business Bureau has made use of the law quite a bit. Um, you know, again, people don't like it when you talk about their business um, in a way that doesn't make them look shining, but that's our country is we're allowed to do that. Right. Well, you, you mentioned also bloggers and, and I have to say as a, as a publisher, as an independent publisher, um, I know one of my fellows, uh, the Austin Bulldog publisher, also um, uh, actually uh, your, your colleague in Austin represented him and he won a suit and was awarded $10,000 in attorney's fees um, as a result of uh, um, the action that she helped him bring yeah. against. So, I mean, it, it goes all over the place and is up close and personal to publishers as well. <laughs> so, so that's terrific. So, um, um, it, when somebody uses the SLAP law, how does it work? So, uh, or and the anti-SLAP law. Sure, the anti-SLAP law comes into play after a lawsuit is filed against you. So, somebody would file a lawsuit against you, and then you would file an anti-SLAP motion that says, this lawsuit looks like it was based on my... Um, a, a communication, um, the right to free speech, or the right to petition, or um, the right of association. So if, if, the, if a lawsuit is based on any of those things, um, you can file an anti-slap law, and it's the burden of the defendant to say, the statute applies. So um, you file an, so you would have to actually have, that's what you're talking about, have an attorney help file a motion, or you could do it yourself, file a motion? Well, plenty of people have done it themselves. Um, it's pretty tricky some some of the elements of the law and so it's very good to get the help of a lawyer if you can because um, but you don't want to make a wrong step you know right. one of the strengths of the law though is that in this particular instance the the process to respond is truncated as opposed to a more traditional lawsuit in a more traditional lawsuit sometimes it takes a few steps to get to that up to that point yeah. and here you get that option right away to jump is it, in and push is it back. within like 60 days or something? 60 days, yeah. yeah. So you file the, the a motion within 60 days. And importantly, it stops all discovery. One of the most expensive things of a lawsuit is discovery. And so if you're doing depositions and written discovery, that drives up the cost of the lawsuit significantly. An anti-slap motion will cut off discovery and force the other side to say, look, I have the very basics of a lawsuit here and, um, you know, so we can proceed, or I don't, which is often the case, frankly. Um, and then they can no longer proceed. And another great thing about the law is that um, if you succeed in your anti-slap motion, the, then the plaintiff um, who's been determined to file a slap suit against you will be assessed with your attorney's fees right. and, and possibly sanctions. The law also works um, before that. So there's being sued, and then there's being threatened with a lawsuit, which is what uh -huh. often happens in and, and the, the law that she helped craft and pass also protects people from that. So sometimes just the knowledge of what a slap lawsuit is and letting them know that you know helps push back 
helps push them back because you're saying, I know, I know what you're up to, and it's you're up to no good, and just know that I have this protection. So you know, if you want to get it on, we can do that. But when they find out that you're aware, sometimes that's enough to, to scare them off. And to just prevent the whole thing right. from happening to begin with. That's right. 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 Exactly. That's why the public team. awareness is so important, right. yeah, is absolutely. to get ahead of that piece. Exactly. And I, we've definitely had circumstances at our firm where someone has called us and said, I've been threatened with a lawsuit. And we've responded to the person who threatened them or the company that's threatened them and pointed out the law. And in, in one case, you know, I got it call from back from opposing counsel I wasn't gonna sue I wasn't gonna sue <laughs> right okay good okay <laughs> well now I know you won't <laughs> right. exactly you know and, and it's nice because even if you win an anti-slap motion or if you win the lawsuit or you win on summary judgment you know once you've been involved in a lawsuit it's not a pleasant experience and so regardless of whether you're gonna win at the end or not it's a deterrent um, to speaking out and, and speaking freely and, and I have plenty of people who call me and say I know you can file this anti-slap motion for me. I know I have rights. I know I would win, but you know what? I'm going to take down that review because so. I just don't want the hassle or the expense or the risk. And so. so you can imagine in a sort of private setting, whether it's Yelp or Yahoo or Google, how that would happen. But if you're a neighborhood, if you're engaging in a government process, if you're showing up to citizens to be heard or you're making comments to the state legislature, that that's a, that's a whole different right. realm. And people, regardless of their opinion or their political persuasion, they shouldn't be required to even have that conversation with themselves, much less someone else. And so that's also so where, where we sort of fit in. Yeah. And the, that, that prong of the statute, you know, we talk a lot about the right to free speech, the right to free speech, but the right to petition your government, the right to go to your representative or go to your city council or go to um, you know the historic district and, and participate in the process is I mean that's the foundation of, right. of our society it's everything. Absolutely. so Absolutely. Um, I'm, the bedrock yeah yeah I'm really and proud of Texas for doing this that's that's terrific I, I always love hearing when the state did something right <laughs> <laughs> thank you both so yeah. much for being here I sure, really appreciate it us. and um, we'll have we'll embed a link where people can find some more information on, on this. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks.